More restrictions for transgender athletes, how the playing field is changing in the world of collegiate sports. Severe thunderstorms erupting in the Texas Hill Country at this hour. Will they make it into the Austin metro area? First warning weather coming up. Plus updates to the South Mopac project when tolls could come to the road and the next steps for the project. Today, the state of Texas expanded its restrictions on which sports transgender athletes can play competitively. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jennifer Sanders. And I'm Daniel Muddy. And Governor Greg Abbott signed a law that requires college athletes to compete on teams that correspond with their sex assigned at birth. It's already the law for K-12 through schools. Our Capitol correspondent, Monica Madden, starts us off. I was an 11-time All-American, a three-time national champion. Austin mom Jerry Chanteau has the medals to remember her award-winning college career. What made sport fun for me was that I got to win. But she says the playing field has changed since her swimming glory days. Socially, the, the trans issue and being a transgender person has absolutely nothing to do with sport. Pointing to openly transgender athletes like Leah Thomas, whose victory sparked a national debate over which teams trans athletes should be able to compete in. They have a biological advantage. Once a boy has gone through male puberty, they are an advantage over females. It's why Governor Abbott signed a bill Thursday that he says will protect women's sports at the collegiate level. This bill is clearly discriminatory. There isn't enough evidence. They're creating a problem that doesn't exist. LGBTQ advocates say, if anything, the law further harms their community. That has had and continues to have uh, a huge impact on the way trans kids and trans people um, see themselves because of the way that the government treats them. There are no reports from Texas NCAA universities of transgender athletes competing in collegiate sports. Monica Madden, KXAN News. And a majority of Americans appear to support laws like this. According to a Gallup survey in May, 69% of those surveyed said transgender athletes should only be able to compete on sports teams that align with their sex assigned at birth. And going in depth right now, the NCAA Board of Governors changed the transgender student athlete policy last year to try and balance fairness and inclusion. So according to the NCAA website, each sports national governing body will determine participation. If there is no governing body, Body, it would then be determined by the Sports International Federation. And if there is no international federation policy, it would be determined by the International Olympic Committee. Student athletes are asked to provide documentation related to testosterone levels at three points in time during the season. Well, we've learned Central Texas nurses plan to strike later this month. Today, National Nurses United announced a one-day strike to happen on Tuesday, June 27th. Now, 2,000 nurses from Ascension will join nurses in other parts of the country on the picket line that day. The union gives hospitals 10 days notice before hitting the picket line to give the hospitals some time to bring in other workers to fill the gaps. Members of the union are asking for more staffing. An update now shows the long road ahead of us before any toll lanes get added to Mopac south of the river. The Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority gave Travis County Commissioners an update on that project today. And the project, the proposed project, could add as many as two express lanes in both directions on Mopac between Cesar Chavez and Slaughter Lane, which is roughly eight miles. Now, as for how they do that, there are several options on the table, some with strong community opposition. Commissioner Bridget Shea says she thinks the process moving forward is going to be contentious. We're still trying to get a better understanding of what are you narrowing it down to? What exactly are the options that you're going to be evaluating in this next go round? The public has clearly stated they do not want or like increased elevations at Lady Bird Lake. Um, no direct connector ramps near Austin High School. So we've heard that. As for the next steps, CTRMA is going to meet with county commissioners and environmental experts about how they move forward. All of this will also come back before the public. Severe weather is affecting millions across the South. Deadly storms touch down in Alabama and Georgia, tearing apart buildings, downing trees and power lines, and leaving roads impassable. Now the summer is already off to a stormy and a really sweaty start. Here in Texas, the heat is a problem, causing some concerns over the 
reliability over the state's power grid and those who work outside. And Jim, those feels like temperatures right now, brutal. Mm. Unbelievable, I'm feeling for people that are working outside yeah. in this today. Plenty of breaks, lots of fluids will get you through this, but it's gonna be a long, hot side. It's still spring right now, right? Take a look at this though. 99 <laughs> degrees in Austin at this hour. Uh, a lot of haze over the city. A lot of that is uh, moisture in the air. High dew points today, but some of that is also smoke coming up from those annual agricultural fires down in Mexico and in Central America. We actually have a bigger story though for some of you right now, and that is a severe thunderstorm that is tracking east at 35 miles per hour up in San Saba County. Now, this is 53 miles away from Austin, so no imminent threat of any rain or storms in the Austin area, but the severe thunderstorm warning for San Saba County now down in this small section of the county there until 545. The storm again moving east toward Lampasas uh, County. Won't be surprised if you folks go under a warning sometime soon. And we have a severe thunderstorm warning for the northernmost part of Llano County. This storm is definitely going to cross parts of northern Lake Buchanan here in the next 15 uh, to 30 minutes or so. So again, I would advise anybody that in a boat or fishing or out on the shores of uh, Lake Buchanan to uh, get to shelter right away. A lot of clouded ground lightning with that. Even a tornado watch uh, in effect right now and seeing a little bit of a spin up back there on the back side of that storm. So we'll talk more about the threat of tornadoes and whether this activity will actually get down into the Austin metro area coming up in first warning weather. Hi, Jim. Thank you very much. Well, today, the growing candidate pool in the 2024 Republican primary is trying to move past the Trump indictment and get back on message. And this while still being forced to reckon with the front runner's legal challenges and his firm holds it hold on a big chunk of the party. Here's NBC's Alice Barr. A week after the federal indictment of former President Donald Trump on charges he knowingly mishandled classified documents and misled investigators, new national polling still shows him 30 points ahead of his next closest rival in the 2024 Republican primary, with three quarters of those questions saying the charges have no impact or make them more likely to vote for him. He could run from his jail cell. Got it. Awesome. And if he does, he still will win. Other candidates are struggling to break through the noise, still having to address the frontrunner's legal woes. Former Vice President Mike Pence facing blowback on a conservative radio show for not committing to pardon Mr. Trump if convicted. I, I just think it's premature to have any conversation about that right now, guys. I really Why would you? That. But hold on. To me, not answering is a no. We either stand by the rule of law, we don't. Today, a new face entering the race. I'm going to run for president. I'm going to run for your children and mine. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez is the third Floridian and first Hispanic in a field of 11 Republican candidates, all fighting for undecided voters. We need to take a look at all of them, to be fair. The only major Democratic candidate, President Biden, focused on his official duties, speaking today about his administration's efforts to end hidden fees on on everything from concert tickets to airline fares, an issue he hopes will resonate with voters as he too looks for a place in the conversation dominated by Donald Trump. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. And coming up on NBC Nightly News, the exclusive interview, Richard Engel has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the president of Ukraine, getting an update on Ukraine's spring counteroffensive. I cannot give you all the details. There are both defensive and offensive actions. Things look not bad. I would say it's generally positive, but it's difficult. Our heroic people, our troops, who are now at the front of the front line, are facing very tough resistance. And you understand why. Because for Russia to lose this campaign to Ukraine, I would say, actually means losing the war. And tune in to see what President Zelensky says about U.S., the presidential candidates. Well, remember when gas prices hit record highs? Of course you do. Well, we have a look at where the prices at the pump stand today. And more homes being built in Kyle, but the community needs more people to complete the project. How the continued growth in Hayes County is impacting the construction industry. 
Officials in Pennsylvania are trying to determine just how to get traffic moving again on parts of I-95. It collapsed Sunday when a tanker truck carrying gasoline lost control and exploded. Now, the plan right now is to just try and fill the existing hole with locally sourced backfill. That would then be paved over to restore six lanes of the roadway. But it's still unclear when drivers would be able to use this section again or how much this could all cost. One year ago today, we saw record high gas prices. And the picture behind me, that was $5 a gallon regular gasoline in Miami. Texas was only slightly better. We hit $4.70 a gallon. Now, gas prices have dropped more than a dollar and a half. Check out our story on KXAN.com. We look at who's still paying the most for gasoline across the state of Texas right now. And we look into the factors into just how much you're paying. Severe thunderstorm warnings continue in San Saba County and in northern Llano County. How will this complex of storms evolve as they move closer to the Austin metro area? We'll take a close look at that next. Construction has started on nearly 900 new homes today in Kyle, and with those new homes comes the need for more construction workers. KXN's Sarah al Sheh tells us just how in demand that industry is right now in Hayes County. Another housing development is on its way to Hayes County. We'll bring 50-foot uh, lots, 60-foot lots, 70-foot lots, and even some 36-foot lots. This one in Kyle, bringing with it 880 new homes. Home builder Lancy Homes Corporation held its groundbreaking for the development Thursday. <laughs> launching what is expected to be about a year-long construction project. We should have homes on the ground and ready to move into uh, with, our, with our clients by second or third quarter of next year. It's just one of the many new developments in the area. Adding to an already growing industry. You can see that it's in very high demand. The percentage of total jobs, the, the construction jobs are very high, a high percentage. CEO of Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area Paul Fletcher says with new homes and businesses constantly moving to the area, there's a high demand for commercial truck drivers. Just like we need have a high demand for people to build the buildings, we have a high demand for the building materials and other supplies that are needed to make it to the job site. While the construction sector is slowing down around the country, Fletcher says that isn't the case in Hayes County. There are way too many big projects going on that require a much larger workforce than we currently have. Sarah Alsha, KXAN News. And according to Workforce Solutions, the construction sector in Hayes County saw one of the highest jumps in job growth over the last five years. It added more than 2,000 jobs in that time. And looking closer at this, jobs continue to come into Kyle, specifically in the restaurant and retail business. Costco just opened in March with 230 employees. At the time, Kyle's mayor said 30 restaurants were under development and construction. We have a full list of what is open and what is to come under this story at KXAN.com. First warning weather with Jim Spencer. We begin tonight with a threat of a tornado or two. A tornado watch is in effect for Mason, San Saba, and Lampasas counties in our western and northern hill country viewing area until 10 o'clock tonight. Let's show you what's on the radar right now. And really, this is the only game in town in mo most of the state of Texas, if not all. You go to Dallas, you go to Houston, San Antonio, out to San Angel. Nothing else is happening, but we do have a big, strong thunderstorm right now. In fact, the second one developing just to the west of San Saba, not yet severe, but it looks like it's intensifying. So we may have another severe thunderstorm warning in a few minutes north and west of San Saba. Looks like it might just miss uh, the city. Uh, the storm that was down here in southern San Saba County has clearly weakened. You see fewer cloud to ground lightning strikes. You see less intense uh, radar colors there. No purples, which was hail up to about an inch and a quarter in diameter just a little while ago. But the warning does officially continue until 545 unless the National Weather Service uh, elects to cancel it earlier. This storm in northern Llano County here uh, headed toward Highway 16 there north of Llano. It'll stay south of Cherokee. Uh, it's going to move across the upper end of Lake Buchanan. Uh, it is a severe thunderstorm warning in Llano County until 5.30 p.m. Let's track these storms forward in time, moving east at 30 miles per hour uh, into Buchanan Dam by 521. Again, this is not the kind of storm it was just 30 minutes ago, but it could re-intensify, so keep an eye on it. Into Burnett by 540. Land passes 547, eventually at Bertram by 6, and Briggs at 606. So be back here during our 6 o'clock news, and we'll see how this timing pans out. Hey, that storm's getting 
getting stronger by the minute there east of Richland Springs. San Saba's right there. You may just miss out on the worst of it in San Saba. So uh, good for you. Again, the broader view, it's nowhere near Austin right now. It's 50 miles away, but we can certainly see it uh, from our uh, tower camera. I'm going to show you that view in a minute. We have other advisories, not severe thunderstorm, but severe heat, essentially. A heat advisory in effect until 8 p.m. tomorrow uh, with heat index readings. That temperature, humidity feels like temperature. We talk about 108 to 114 again tomorrow, including the Austin Metro and other counties eastward. We hit 100 degrees again today. It's the third time this summer, and we have 100 or hotter every day in our next seven-day forecast. This is too early for hundreds this often. Look at these current temperatures. Uh, we've got some rain-cooled air in San Saba County, but everybody else in the upper 90s, 99 in Austin, feels like when you factor in the humidity and you're sitting under a shade tree, feels like 111 in Dripping Springs right now, 111 in Austin, 116 in LaGrange, 117 down in Flatonia. That's ridiculous. Hey, that rain's 50 miles away, but look at that uh, cloud there. Uh, that's called a, an, an anvil cloud uh, coming off a severe thunderstorm that's, again, 50 miles away. We can see it live from Austin from our Lorenz and Lorenz. 360 camera out in Westlake Hills. Pretty anvil there. 99 degrees. Feels like 111. Uh, mold, medium, everything else low today. Around the state, pretty hot back to the northwest and west and northwest. Tornado watches extending up to the Kansas border. Now, look, what's going to happen from here forward? Our model says this stuff weakens as it comes into Williamson County, especially eastern Williamson County, by 730, then kind of begins to dissipate by 8, maybe a little more development back down to the west by 9 or 10. I uh, don't know that that's so likely, but we'll certainly keep an eye on it for you. All right, forecast tonight, 78 degrees. Let me just take you right to the seven-day forecast. By the way, our low this morning was 82. That was a record. Tomorrow we're forecasting a record 104, 102 on Saturday, Father's Day Sunday, hot Tying records again on Monday and Tuesday. Look at that, 100 to 106 over the next seven days. Protecting tribal identity, the case to keep Native American children who need a home and families that are like them. Oh, welcome back. The National Weather Service has just issued a tornado warning now for that portion of the thunderstorm we were showing you in northern Llano County. And it is this area back here that we talked about a while ago that was showing a little bit of a sign of circulation. Uh, there is still a little hook back here, and it is generally moving down toward the uh, community of Llano. In this red polygon right there, that is the area in which if you live, you should take tornado precautions right now. That is, go to the interior room on the lowest level of your home, a closet, a hallway, a bathroom. Bathtubs will make a good shelter if they're in the middle of the house and you don't have any external windows. If you are in a mobile home in this polygon area here along a Highway 71 there, uh, and then north of Llano on Highway 16 from the city of Llano, about halfway up to the uh, San Saba County line, about halfway between Llano and Cherokee, you need to take tornado precautions at this time. We do not have a visual sighting of a tornado. What we do have is rotating, a rotating supercell thunderstorm out here, and we're seeing some low-level rotation in the wind. And so uh, the National Weather Service believing that at any moment a tornado, funnel cloud tornado could form drop out of this portion of the thunderstorm and then remain likely in this red polygon there, which would again, just barely, but it does include you folks in the city of Llano. Let's take our Llano County camera live. Our broadcast tower in the hill country is located southeast of Llano, and we don't see anything uh, too impressive from that particular shot other than the distant thunderstorm and the cloudy sky. So let's come back here uh, to the radar here for just one more minute. Uh, tornado warning is in effect now. Uh, for Llano County, including the city of Llano in this area, north paralleling Highway 16 and then back to the west on Highway 71 all the way down here to uh, 29. That is the area in which there is a tornado warning. I mentioned a few moments ago to go that interior room in the lowest portion of your uh, home on the first floor if you have multiple floors. 
uh, get into that interior room and then cover up with pillows or blankets or cushions. If you've got a bicycle helmet or motorcycle helmet, put that on too if you are in that interior room. Now, again, this does not apply to mobile homes. I notice here behind me it says leave mobile homes for sturdier structure. Mobile homes, even in weak uh, EF0, EF1 tornadoes, they do not provide protection at all, even in the interior most room in the mobile home. They do not provide protection at all from tornadoes, and so you need to get out of there and get to a more sturdy structure. Uh, let's say you've got a convenience store uh, a half mile down the road. Go there and get into one of the big freezers. That's better, or coolers back there. That's better than staying in a mobile home if you see a tornado approaching. That's the only time you would ever get in a car and drive away is if you were trying to evacuate a mobile home, okay? Otherwise, you're fine in your house in that interior room on the lowest level with 99% of the tornadoes that we see, especially in our area, which tend to be the very weak ones, EF zeros, EF ones. Still seeing some circulation down here. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning for uh, Lano County as well. But right now we have the tornado warning uh, for the city of Lano and this portion of Lano County just east and just west of Highway 16. In a severe thunderstorm warning you can see on your screen, you simply stay indoors and away from windows, avoid electrical appliances, and generally don't go back outside until 30 minutes after you hear the last thunder. You still could be in danger from uh, a lightning strike. Let me go to my next uh, graphic here and again, you know, show you those tornado warning safety rules. Interior room, lowest level, pillows, blankets on top of you, get out of those uh, mobile homes for more sturdy structure. Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.